Hey, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about scientific notation in a quick and straightforward way. So what is scientific notation? Why would we use it? And how do we go about using it? Let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. So first of all, scientific notation is a convenient method for dealing with very large or very small numbers. We use this in science all of the time, and so it's important to get a handle on what this is. Importantly, it also helps us to show what numbers are significant. And so I've talked more about that in other screencasts. I'll put a link to that in the upper right right about now. But let's get back to scientific notation. So if we wanted to represent this number here, 3210, 3210, in scientific notation, typically how we would do this is we would write 3.21 times 10 to the third this is an equivalency here. These two numbers are the same value, just written in different ways, you could say, right? If we multiplied 3.21 times effectively 1,000, it would give us 3,210. Similarly, if we wanted to convert this into another format where we have the decimal points in between the first and the second numbers, what do you think we would write for this answer over here? Well, it would be 3.21 times 10 to the fifth. And then if there are units for that, we should add in our units as well. How about this one over here? What would this be? Well, that would be 3.21 times 10 to the eighth. So hopefully you can see the pattern here. These times 10 to the something power are a way to help us to write very large numbers in a small and compact and easy to deal with way. So that's what we're doing here. But it's not just very large numbers that we can do this with. We can do this with very small numbers as well. So if I show you a similar pattern over here, this number right here, 0 0.0321, is only significant with the 3, the 2, and the 1. And so what we want to do is write 3.21 times 10 to the negative 2. So that would be moving the decimal place in the opposite direction, so to speak. If we take a look at this, notice there are only two sig figs here. There's no 1 at the end. And so instead of writing 3.21, in this case we'll write 3.2 times 10 to the, what do you think the power would be? Well, you're going to count over, so it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. And it's moving to the right, that decimal place is being moved to the right, so we're going to make that a negative value. This is a very small number that we're dealing with, and whenever you deal with negative exponents, you're dealing with very small numbers. How about this one over here? What do you expect this would be? Well, the base is going to be the same. It's going to be 3.2 and we just count over how many we have. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that should be 3.2 times 10 to the negative 6th power. Now, I do want to point out that 3.2 times 10 to the negative 6 is the same thing as multiplying 3.2 times 1 over 10 to the 6. That's another way of thinking about this exponent over here. If you have a negative exponent, then that would be equivalent to a fraction where that negative number is in the denominator over here. So if we work the problem this way, we're going to end up with this as our final answer, which is what we started with over here. Again, I just want to emphasize that we have three sig figs here for this example. We've only got two sig figs for these two examples. And so the base, or the mantisa, is there to help us to notice how many sig figs are in the number that we're dealing with. So hopefully that was helpful. If you have any comments or questions down below, please let me know. And I hope you all have a great day. Take care.